Hi, I'm Stuart Tucker. I'm a consultant spinal surgeon at Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital in London. I also work at several private hospitals within central London, and I've been in practice for 21 years. I've been asked to talk to you today about the Nuvasiv Reline system, uh, a screw system that was developed in, from 2012 to 2013, and which I started using clinically in 2014 and have used it consistently for all my spinal work since then. The Reliant project was an exciting project to be involved in. It set the target of developing a global system which uh, could treat all types of spinal pathology. So not just adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, but complex adult deformity, as well as degenerative low back, minimally invasive surgery, and tumor surgery. The my particular interest in, in spinal surgery is deformity correction, and one spin-off of the Reliant system was the Reliant 3D technique, which I saw the potential for it to achieve. In order to achieve that, we use a clever reduction tower, uh, which had already been developed by Nuvasiv for minimally invasive surgery, and I saw the potential to use this as a way of correcting the deformity reducing the spine to the rod and, produce, and also performing derotation at the same time. So the technique in, uses a tower attached to the screw which is performed by the scrub nurse and so when you insert a pedicle screw the screw is passed to you with a tower pre-attached and you use the towers throughout the construct. This, the advantage of the towers is that it has a very high depth and then once you've put in the screws throughout the length of the construct, you can contour your rod and you can insert the rod through the towers at all levels. And this has never been an issue. No matter what contour you've got in the rod, you can use it to achieve that. So the towers are given to you pre-assembled, which reduces the steps of the operation. Because of the strength of the six millimeter cobalt chrome rod, you're able to reduce the spine without flattening of that rod and that also enables a significant derotation to be achieved in just in that reduction as you pull the spine to the rod with the rod staying in place with the contour that you've placed into it you're automatically achieving a degree of derotation before you then do your final direct vertical derotation using the sook technique the the towers are provided to you uh, pre-assembled to the screws, which reduces the operating time and reduces the number of steps required to complete the operation, which I see as a particular advantage in what can often be quite lengthy surgery. Once you've inserted all the screws with the towers, you can then contour the rod and you can insert the rod either from proximal or distal um, through all the towers, and then you can perform the reduction of the spine to the rod. The, this enables a very gradual reduction of the spine and is extremely powerful. The towers are extremely well designed so that the contact with the screw is extremely strong. And I've never had a situation where a tower is displaced from the screw, which is obviously advantageous and something I've seen in another of other systems which have less sophisticated reduction uh, tools. Once the rod is inserted and you start to do your reduction, you can do a gradual reduction throughout the spinal construct. And once you've reduced the spine to the rod through all the screws, you can then do a, a direct vertical ro derotation before you do your final locking. You're able, also able, once you've achieved that, to do a final balancing at the proximal and distal levels to ensure that your shoulder balance and your thoracic lumbar balance or lumbar balance, depending on how distal you've had to go with your reduction, uh, is achieved. So I found this technique to be extremely powerful. It achieves a very high correction, both in the coronal plane and also using the different rod diameters, which is another advantage of this system. We have a six millimeter cobalt chrome rod, which, which is extremely strong and which retains its shape. And so you're able to get an excellent correction in the sagittal plane at the same time as a very powerful correction in the coronal plane. When I was learning spinal surgery in my early years as a consultant, I was obviously very much dependent on the screw systems that I'd been taught upon. 
being involved in the development of Nuvasive Reliance System was A, an exciting project, and B, gave me a system which I, I was completely confident in, in achieving the goals that I wanted it to achieve, um, and complete confidence in the design of the instrumentation which would enable me to achieve that. But I've now been using the Reliance System for seven years, and during that time have taught a number of spinal fellows and also consultant colleagues to use the system and to use the particular technique which we endorse for this. It's a very logical system to use and using the different stages it's something that fellows and consultants have found very easy to adapt and to use. A particular advantage of the system is that you can use rods of different diameters without changing the screws. So we have a range from 5 to 5.5 to 6 diameter rods that you can use in both titanium and cobalt chrome. This means that you can be as aggressive as you want to be in terms of achieving coronal and sagittal correction and also you can be more sensitive when you've got more complex pathology or poor bone to ensure that you reduce the incidence of screw pull out. Some surgeons have expressed concern about the ability to do pontiosteotomy with multiple towers in place and the room and access that you have to the spine in order to achieve that. I personally have found that no difficulty at all, providing you've got uh, kerosene rangeurs of the appropriate length. And also, if you're particularly concerned, you can remove a tower and reapply it or use one of the other reduction towers at that level, if that's an issue for you. So an example of the use of this system is this scoliosis case, which required instrumentation of both thoracic and lumbar curves. The flexibility of the curve is demonstrated in the bend views and the construct is as shown. I tend to use quite a high screw density but do not insist on two screws at every level depending on the quality of the patient's bone and with this we're able to achieve a powerful correction in the coronal plane. We've saved a level distally um, fixing to L3 uh, rather than going to L4 and which obviously is advantageous for the patient and also we've achieved a good sagittal profile for the patient also. This patient has a substantial thoracic curve and this demonstrates well the power of the system in terms of achieving the coronal correction. This type of curve requires a high screw density um, enabling the distribution of load but you can see that using the six millimeter cobalt chrome rod, you're able to achieve a very powerful correction in the coronal plane. The patient was very hypokyphotic, and so we were able to pull out the spine to some degree, but still, um, this was done relatively early with the system, not going for broke in terms of achieving kyphotic profile, but an excellent balance correction of the spine with a good clinical result. This case is an elderly patient who had had a previous lumbar fusion uh, resulting in severe sagittal imbalance. She required initially a lumbar fusion which failed proximally and then underwent extensive fusion to her proximal thoracic spine combined with a pedicle subtraction osteotomy and a four rod technique to provide stability and strength. This shows the versatility of the system and its adaptability in multiple pathologies. I hope we'll be able to meet in the future at conferences once they restart and if that doesn't happen for some time I'm happy to discuss things on a one-to-one -one basis via the internet uh, to give more insight into the instrumentation system and how best to use it for individual cases. Thank you.